Hello. Our story today is called Pilot Ray, the Tale of a Snail. In a wild secret garden, not too far away, lived the smallest of snails, and the snail's name was Ray. Ray wasn't alone in the garden so green. He lived with his brothers, Steve, Francis, and Dean. Ray's brothers were known for their skills far and wide. They would boast about them with their chests full of pride. But what about Ray? What was special about him? He was slow, not creative, not strong, too slim. All you are is tiny, his brothers would scream. But Ray's superpower was dreaming a dream. He wondered all day how it feels to fly high like a bee or a bird through the blue endless sky. One day he announced, I'll be flying up there and you will be gazing at me in the air. I will be Pilot Ray and I'll fly far away. <clears throat> None of you care about me anyway. Oh, forget it. His brothers were laughing out loud. You'll never succeed. Snails can't fly like a cloud. When Ray found a wrapper, he hoped he would fly. He folded an airplane and pushed it up high, but Ray was too slow and he failed to hop on. So he watched it take off and soon the airplane was gone. At noon the next day, the air filled with heat. Ray climbed on a berry all juicy and sweet. He chewed and he chomped while he ate a whole lot. Soon he yawned and lay down, then dozed off on the spot. Ray was easy to spy lying there on the red, snoring peacefully in his strawberry bed. Ray didn't notice the sky turning black, nor the crow swooping in to have snail for a snack. It wasted no time and it grabbed the poor chap, and that was how Ray quickly ended his nap. Ray was scared for his life because once he had heard that things don't end well on the claws of a bird, he yelled, help, oh no, help, and he made such a noise that it woke the whole garden, including the boys. Steve, Francis, and Dean all looked up straight away. This was surely the final goodbye for poor Ray. They had tears in their eyes, held them back with all might. When they watched little Ray disappear out of sight, quietly Dean sighed, I'll miss that snail, though you can't choose your fam, but he's still our bro. High up in the air, things looked terribly bad. I won't make it, thought Ray, and that made him so sad. Why did we waste time with the fighting and such? Why didn't I say that I love them so much? With claws wrapped around him as sharp as a knife, he decided to cherish his last moments of life. He breathed the cold air, smelled the late summer breeze, and looked down at his home, at the creek and the trees. Oh, what is this thing that is catching my eye? It is white and it flies right below in the sky. Little Ray made a plan. Now I know what I must do. He first held his breath so the crow had no clue. Then he wiggled and jiggled, ignoring the pain. I can't give up now. There is freedom to gain. Soon he slipped out through the claws of the crow. Down, down he fell and the crow didn't know. He had left there behind in the crow's prison cell. Nothing less than his house, his beloved green shell. Ray flew down with a grin, fireworks in his brain, and he dropped with a plop on his own paper airplane. The goggles in place and a scarf wrapped up tight, Pilot Ray flew back home in elegant flight. Right above the green garden, big circles he flew. He spotted his crew and he yelled, I love you. Steve, Francis, and Dean looked in shock at each other. Then they cheered loudly at the return of their brother. He greeted them warmly and jumped for a cuddle, then huddled together to kiss and to snuggle. And gently they whispered, we need one another. You are still so tiny, but a great little brother. That Ray lost his shell, they'd remember forever. He was known from then on as the first slug pilot ever. That is the end of our story today. Thank you so much for joining me.